Well, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Welcome to Worship at Faith Presbyterian Church, all of you who are here with us in the sanctuary and anyone who might be joining us online, either via live stream or a recording later in the week, whenever and wherever you're worshiping with us, we're glad that you're here. Uh, for those of you who are not here in the sanctuary, I do feel a little bit sorry for you because you're not experiencing this aroma of fresh pop popcorn. Uh, for the second week in a row, we have fresh pop popcorn in our narthex to celebrate our summertime at the movie sermon series. So for the next uh, four weeks, you have time to get here and enjoy some popcorn at church. What could be more fun than that? Uh, if you are visiting with us, uh, we would love to have a record of your visit. If, even if you're online, you can drop us uh, a note in the comments section. And we would love to be a church that prays with you. If you have a prayer request or a joy or concern, you can fill out one of these prayer request cards, probably in the seat back in front of you or a, a row near you. If you find one of those and let us know how we can be in prayer for you and drop it in this basket during our passing of the peace. We'll rise and uh, roam around the sanctuary. You can drop it in. And those will be read during their prayers of the people, unless it's marked confidential and then it won't be shared out loud. Let's begin uh, our hour of worship with prayer. Join me in prayer. Creator God, this is the day that you have made. This is the day you have called holy. Sabbath day, a rest day, a time out. Out of the world and into the presence of God, a day for rejoicing. Make us glad this morning. Remove us from our distractions, our heart worries, our to-do list, our should-haves, and all the constant stress and strain that life brings. And in this place, O oh God, give us more of you. Here may our hearts be filled with peace and our mouths be filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Fill us to brimming and overflowing with the joy of the Lord. Amen. And now to lead us in our call to worship is our worship leader, Laura Johnson. Good morning. Jesus offers a commandment. With incredible power of God's love for us. And it is in this our love for one another. Come, children of God, let us love one another. Please stand as you are able to sing our opening hymn, number 203, in the Glory to God hymn.
friends, in the midst of our busy lives, this time of corporate confession and our Reformed worship tradition gives us the opportunity to pause and reflect on how it is that we spend our time. Have we dedicated ourselves to loving others? Have we spent energy on things that bring life to us and to those around us? Christ invites us to bring our best and our worst to him and in prayer that he might offer us healing and peace. So let's join our hearts and our voices together in a prayer of reconciliation, which is printed in your bulletin. Let's pray. Lord, the hardest thing you asked was that we love our enemies. We know how we'd like to love them. We'd love our enemies to be far away. We'd love them not to compromise our security. We'd love them not to scare us or change the way we live. We'd love them to be lovable. But if loving enemies were easy, we know we wouldn't need God's strong arms to bear us up in difficult times. God of all mercy, teach us to know how to love enemies, to wish them the best of the life you intend each human to have. Teach us faith, so we know that only the strength to stop hating will halt the cycles of violence and revenge. Teach us forgiveness as we enjoy your forgiveness and suffering love. Teach us, O Lord, your ways. And hear us now as we open our hearts to you in the silence. Friends, here's the good news. Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Christ lifts the heavy burdens of sin and frees us for a new life in his name. So trust that you are forgiven and be at peace. We give thanks as a renewed, forgiven people. Alleluia. Amen. And now for a time of special music, we have Julia Yoon.
always. And now it's time for children's time. So come on over, ladies. We're three for three today. Yay. How do you like our new children's play place? Is it fun? You all having fun over there? Good. Hey, Chloe, come on over if you want to. So um, today is June 2nd. It's the first Sunday of June and kind of the first of summer. It's getting kind of hot, yeah. Have you done anything summery yet? Just getting... My friend's house the other day. That's very summery. Very good. Well, I love... Oh, we oh, went to the beach? Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. That's a very summery thing to do. Well, when my kids were little, we would always have a summer bucket list. Have you ever heard of a bucket list? It's all the things you want to do before you run out of time. And so summer doesn't last forever, right? School starts eventually. So we actually got a bucket, and all of us would write things we want to do on a clothespin, and we would pin it to the top of the bucket. And it could be little things like eat a popsicle, or it could be big things like go on vacation. But we had a mix, and everybody got to put some some clips on. And when we did that thing, we would take the clip off and throw it in the bucket. And hopefully by the end of the summer, it would be all all empty. We never got to everything because (laughs) we had some big ideas. But we did our very, very best. And so it was fun. And so you might want to do that with your family at home. But in case you can't, I printed out these summer bucket list coloring sheets. And so you can color all these summery things. There's flip-flops and boats and sunglasses and ice cream cones some of my favorite favorite summer things, and you can make a list with your family and decide once you do something, you can check it off. So I want to give you these, and at the end of the summer, maybe bring it back and let's talk about all the fun things you did, okay, with your family. And let's remember, no matter what we do this summer, God's with us always, whether we go to the beach or on vacation or just play in the mud puddles in our backyard. God is always with us, okay? Let's pray and thank God for that. Dear God, Thank you for summer. Thank you for summer. Thank you for rest. Thank you for rest. And thank you for fun. Thank you for fun. Help keep us safe. Help keep us safe. And help us remember. Help us remember. You're with us always. You're with us always. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all go have fun in the nursery with the child care ladies. We'll see you next time. Oh, let's say let's greet the congregation. Can y'all say, grace and peace be with you? Three, two, one. Grace and peace be with you. Let's rise and greet each other with Christian love. And if you have a prayer request, now's the time to bring those forward to the basket. want to refill your popcorn now now would be a good time to grab it if you would like one and thank you to our our concession stand uh workers out there in the aprons keeping us going as we kind of find our way back to our seats i'll remind you that there's lots of ways to live into our faith here at faith presbyterian church one of those comes right after worship where we gather for a time of uh, community and fellowship across the courtyard in our um, fellowship hall 
Uh, we have coffee and cookies every week in addition to our con conversation. And you have an opportunity to help with that. If you can bring uh, snacks, there's a sign-up sheet, and Susan Sanders coordinates that. Likewise, uh, another easy way to contribute to congregational life is by bringing flowers to grace our sanctuary on Sunday morning. These can be brought in memory or in honor of those who are important to you. Today's flowers uh, are beautiful uh, red roses and I think some lilies that are about to open up. Um, de dedicated by Jean Frank in memory of her mother who would have been 103 today on June 2nd. And we know she lost her mother a few weeks ago. So uh, prayers for Jean and her family as they continue to mourn the loss of such a remarkable woman. You might have noticed in the e-news that we had a follow-up to our family meetings that we had in April. There's a recap in there of some of the major conversation points that we discussed in those meetings and also some open-ended questions. So if you weren't able to participate or if you wish you had said something you forgot to, uh, there's some open-ended questions around these themes in a Google form. And so it's in the e-news. It'll run in there for a few more weeks, but we'd love to hear from all the members of our faith family. This is really just about how we're moving forward. It's kind of like a state of the church uh, type of uh, type of check-in and so if you have anything to share uh, any great ideas any uh, things that uh, you might not see us doing that we could be doing to be better uh, loving God and loving our neighbors and uh, re reflecting God inside these walls and also to the community around us we want to have those conversations and so this is your opportunity look for this little graphic in the e-news and there'll be a google form to click on it's really easy to fill out we have an opportunity to uh, participate in some children's ministry with a sister church, Shepherd of the Hills. Their vacation Bible school is June 24th through 27th, and we've been invited to uh, invite our families and also our youth and adult volunteers. So if you'd like to uh, take part in that, it's a... Uh, relatively brief commitment. It's four days for three hours a day uh, this week of, in late June. So there's more details about that in the e-news as well and also links where we can uh, register as volunteers or participants. And if you have questions about that, see me. I'm, I'm partnering to, to help plan this. So uh, likewise, more opportunities to get involved with uh, our, our neighborhood communities. We are partnering with Travis Heights Elementary beginning in the fall. Uh, the school year will be here before we know it. Uh, summer will go fast. But we are partnering with Kids Hope USA to put mentors from this congregation into Travis Heights Elementary. And the administration will match us with children who need uh, a loving, caring adult presence in their life. It's only one-on-one -on -one with one child, one hour a week. It's, it's our church in Travis Travis Heights Elementary in a beautiful way um, to get to know our neighbors and to um, let families in our uh, community know how much uh, faith cherishes children and uh, relationships with our with our neighbors. Julie Jerome is the director of this program representing our church with the administration and with Kids Hope and so I'm happy to say we have fulfilled our initial commitment which was a minimum of five mentors. Uh, we will have five mentors training this summer and uh, ready to go in the fall but it's not too late. Uh, I get the feeling that they can use as many mentors as we can send them so uh, if this is something that's kind of nagging at your heart uh, I invite you to explore more and ask you some questions uh, and if you're just not ready to connect um, or to commit to <coughs> the mentoring quite yet uh, we do need prayer partners so there's a way for you to be peripherally involved in a very important way as we pray for the launch of this new uh, endeavor through our external team and in our church okay so uh, whoops too too quick um, we have a let me make sure I got everything I don't think so hold on um let's see okay yes we are in this summertime at the movies um sermon series and so I promised you each week I would preview what's coming up next uh so next week we are reviewing the princess bride the princess bride we've had two fairly contemporary movies now we're going back to the 80s which was the best movie best decade for movies ever um uh, the princess bride kind of a classic romantic comedy so if you haven't seen the princess bride or if you haven't seen it in a long time uh, i invite you to to review that this week so you'll be all ready for next week's uh, sermon if it's not up your alley i promise you you don't have to see these movies to appreciate the sermons i try to be careful of that so uh that's what's coming up next now i'm going to back up just a little bit and talk about um, our 
new corner over here. Um, you might have noticed that uh, we took out a pew and we have uh, some space for kids over here in our corner and that's a joint endeavor between the internal team and BART and there's really threefold reasons for this. First of all we had a great deal of wonderful children's supplies and um, pieces that supplemented curriculum from years past and they were in storage cabinets and uh, we needed that space for other things and so instead of just restoring those things, we thought, why not bring them out where they can actually be used by the children that we have uh, every week? Even if it's not in formal children's programming, uh, they can put their hands on these things and, and, and have, a, uh, have a good time with those before they adjourn to their nursery. And so we decided to bring all that over here to the sanctuary so it can seen and be seen. And also that creates not only a welcoming environment for the kids and families that we have, but also for kids and families that might come in the sanctuary. I want this to be a sanctuary that at first glance is ready for kids, right? We're not reactive to families who might come see us. We're ready for kids right now. And kids that walk in these doors with their families automatically know this church is for me. Uh, there's a place for me here. And uh, thirdly, with our child care workers, uh, you know, they want a vacation. And so there's going to be a couple of weeks this summer where they overlap and we don't have child care to provide. And so that's going to occur the last two Sundays in June. And so we wanted to make um, church conducive for children for the entire hour. And so we're going to incorporate them into worship a little bit more. Uh, but this space is a, a big part of that. It's not, um, it's not a place where kids have to be. Hopefully it's a place where they might enjoy being. Uh, in addition to sitting with their families and, and all those types of things uh, that is a part of worship. Um, but it is a, a place that, that we had space for and we wanted to create a place where kids can, can be and be a part of worship for the whole hour. Now, um, Along with this, this is kind of a joint uh, cooperative effort with something else that BART and the session have been working on uh, for quite some time, which is an increased attention to our online uh, safety and our online media policy. Uh, we've looked at um, the, the privacy of those who attend worship and uh, those uh, who uh, might choose not to be on camera. And so we've created a camera-free zone in our sanctuary. Uh, you might have noticed that um, on the front of the bulletin we've added for the past couple of weeks a little uh, notification here that we live stream and record our services. Um, and if someone prefers to remain off camera, an usher can guide them to a privacy zone. Well, that privacy zone is right over here in this same corner. Here's an image of the privacy seating map. They're posted on the doors and on the walls. Um, the cameras can avoid basically this area and so if there are those in our congregation or those that visit us that for whatever reason choose not to be caught on camera uh, for the live stream or the YouTube that's archived um, they can sit here with complete privacy during worship and so we wanted to make sure that that was clear and that there's notifications of that <coughs> to all those who who might need to know that and so we're being proactive uh, in our in our privacy and making sure that Worship is an inclusive experience uh, for all, and, and we're not capturing anyone on camera who, who might wish to remain uh, in worship in privacy. So if you have questions about that, you can ask any of the elders. We've had pretty exhaustive discussions around all this, as you can imagine, and uh, of course, I'm, I'm happy to speak with you about it as well. But that is what I wanted to make you aware of, uh, that the sanctuary is uh, changing a little bit, and uh, I think it's all for the better. So... Now uh, I will invite Laura up for the call to worship. One of the ways that we live into our faith is through acts of generosity. There are many ways to participate in the mission and ministry of Faith Church, but one way is through our gifts and offerings. Our gifts offer healing and hope to a world that desperately needs it. If, if you have physical gifts to offer today, um, you may place them in the collection plate or in the wooden box in the narthex. If you prefer to give electronically, you may do so very easily through the website, and there's also a QR code on the back of your bulletin. So now, remembering all that we have is a gift from God, let us return a portion to God of what we have been so generously given.
generous God, shine your light and love upon these gifts and these givers. We offer ourselves as offering, trusting that your spirit of power can make us instruments of your healing and wholeness. Through Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Can we transition into a time of prayer, our prayer of intercession and our prayers of the people? So I invite you to take a deep breath and find your, find your feet and your place in the pew as we approach God with prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we come to you with empty hands. We confessed earlier we have not been able to love our enemies, and as a rule, we've never even seen them. We've avoided them. And when we saw them, we felt anger and fear and anything but love. And so we come to you not as the children of your love, but as the enemy of our enemies, beseeching you for ourselves and all the others. Bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you. Forgive us for what we have failed to do for our enemies. You lead us out of the constriction of fear and out of our prisons of hate and into the wide space of freedom. God, we pray, let us see your Son, which rises upon the evil and the good, and rejoice in the warmth of that Son, together with our enemies. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life, and for the gift of your Son, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that you would lead us through the trials and the suffering and the sorrow and the challenges and the struggles and all the tired times and all the dark places that we experience in this life. We ask that you be with those who weep or cannot sleep or have no peace or who seek release. And lead us with the grace and the love and the peace of your spirit that fills us with hope and patience and stamina. We pray that you would transform us in your image, in your son, and in your name. Transform us to grow and to understand and to see. Transform us that we can be made whole. And in wholeness, we may be the hands and heart of Christ. And Lord, we pray now also for you to come near to those in our community, those on our prayer list, those whom we name before you now. In your mercy, beloved God, hear these prayers of your people. We pray prayers of thanks for the wonderful time that Sam and Cindy had during her granddaughter's visit. We also continue to pray prayers for Sam's healing as he is hospitalized and anticipating a release tomorrow. Cure his body of this fluid retention and complication from a recent heart procedure so that he may rest at home peacefully and heal. We pray for friends of uh, Gina and Kevin Lungwitz. Andrea Henderson, who was hospitalized for a stroke. Alongside these prayers are prayers of joy for her son, Andrew, who graduated from high school this week. We pray for their healing and wholeness. And we pray for healing and wholeness for Pete's son, who's mentally ill, and his caregiver. Grant all those near to that situation peace and comfort. Loving Lord, we pray for all members of this community and our greater community who need your care. We pray that you would ease the suffering of the sick and speed the healing of those in recovery. Comfort all those who mourn and bring rest to all who are worn down. Surround the isolated with love and soothe the troubled minds of the anxious and the addicted. Loving God, we offer those and all these in prayers to you now. As now, in the silence, we lift those that remain on our hearts, unwritten and unspoken and known only to you. Hear our prayers. We lift these prayers to you, gracious God, confident that you hear us and know our hearts. 
And with hope, we join our voices in the voices of countless generations, languages, and communities as we pray the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Amen. <coughs> Amen. We are continuing on with our summertime at the movies. This is week two. Uh, if you missed last week, we started with uh, probably my least favorite genre of movies, which is action-adventure superheroes with Spider-Man, a modern retelling of a Spider-Man story. And I think we did all right. Um, my teenagers had no, no critique, and so that's a miracle. So uh, this week, though, we're kind of uh, moving into my favorite genre of movies, which is a dramatic comedy, which may seem a little... Uh, uh, counterintuitive, but um, well, let me get to the right screen. There we go. Uh, today we're talking about this movie with my favorite actor, Tom Hanks, uh, A Man Called Otto. Uh, and it, it is kind of a dramedy, kind of a dramatic comedy, meaning that it does have light and, um, and, and fun parts, and, and you will laugh out loud at, at parts. Hopefully some of the clips I've chosen will give you a little bit of a chuckle this morning. Uh, but it's also poignant, and it's also heartfelt, and you leave uh, you leave this story a little bit changed. And those are my favorite types of stories because, after all, movies are really just good stories, right? And stories are how we relate. That's why Jesus told so many of them. So I think it makes for a great summertime um, sermon series. And any of, even if you're not liking this, even if you're not digging these uh, movie sermons, uh, we have popcorn. So hopefully uh, there's something for everybody. And I'm, I'm winning. I'm winning your hearts and your tummies uh, at this June. Uh, but A Man Called Otto. A Man Called Otto is, uh, okay, it was released in 2022, kind of right as everybody was heading back into the theaters. But I know it's, it's been on a lot of streaming platforms, so you could have seen it from the comfort of your own home. It is this American comedy drama um, it's based on a book that's written by a Swedish author, and there was a previous rendition of this movie uh, with a different title, A Man Called Ove. I've never seen that movie. I, I'm, I'm based strictly, I'm, I'm pure Hanks uh, here. Um, but if, if, if you love this story, you might want to check out that book or the previous movie. Uh, but it's this film about a grumpy widower named Otto Anderson, which is uh, portrayed by Tom Hanks. He's depressed, and he's lost his sense of purpose after his wife's death. He's kind of been forced into retirement, and he's just kind of having a crisis. Otto harbors a lot of resentment and anger, as you'll see in some of our, our clips. But the movie depicts how his life begins to change when he encounters some new neighbors who, despite his grumpiness and despite his resistance and hostility, they show him kindness and they show him patience and they have unconditional love and the persistence of that love gradually softens his heart and it illustrates this transformative power of loving beyond measure. And so I want to start off um, our time together with a clip that is a trailer. So this is the trailer you may have seen on TV or in the theaters, but I think it, 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 it's very difficult to summarize an entire film in a 20-minute sermon, but so uh, I'm going to rely on the trailer today to kind of set the stage. Um, there we go. There you have it. 
uh, a bear called Otto. So uh, you may have seen in there <clears throat> this, this phrase, he doesn't hate the world. He's just the people ruining it. <laughs> that kind of sums up uh, the perspective we find this character in in the beginning. And in fact, uh, one of the plot points is that uh, Otto plans to end his life. He um, has several different plans that are always interrupted uh, by, by circumstance. And especially um, his plans are interrupted in a large way when this young family moves in next door, as you can see uh, from the trailer. They really uh, got in his personal space and, and changed how he saw the world. The, the mom, uh, her character's name is Marisol. Uh, she's very quick-witted. She's very uh, sweet. And she challenges him to see life differently. There's this unlikely friendship that uh, bonds the two together and changes his life and turns his world around as well as the families. And so one of the uh, challenges we have for this sermon series is that we're finding God on film. We're finding God on film uh, because I believe God is everywhere and God is in the movies. God's at the movies. And so that's the challenge for us each week, not just to be entertained, but to also connect and find parallels between the film that we're focusing on and, and scripture. And so today we're going to delve into a profound teaching of Jesus from the gospel of Luke chapter 6. You may have already suspected from some of our liturgy and our prayers that we're focusing on Jesus's most difficult teaching to love our enemies. And so listen now as we're called to this higher standard of love and forgiveness uh, straight from the teachings of Jesus. And so um, as we uh, study the scripture and we're going to draw some parallels from, from this movie and this story of transformation and redemption to uh, the teachings of Jesus. So let's start um, with our, let's see if I can find it. There we go. We're going to start. This is our main teaching text, uh, Luke 6, verses 27 through 31. And then a little bit later in the sermon, we're going to, Jesus had some more to say on this subject. So we're going to look at it a little bit more. But this is our main teaching scripture from the uh, NRSV translation where Jesus says, But I say to you who are listening, not to us, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who asks of you. And if anyone takes away what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So if you ever wondered where that golden rule appeared in Scripture, here it is, right there at the end of this passage. Do, unto other, do to others as you would have them do to you. And this is tacked on to Jesus' command to love our enemies, which goes beyond all of our natural human inclinations, right? Ugh. Uh, it's really the worst. Um, I follow someone who uh, once said, um, this is uh, the stuff that she wishes Jesus had never said. She can get on board with like 60% Jesus, but this, this stuff that falls in the, the hard teachings, this is really tough. Uh, and yet, here it is, it's scripture in black and white, because it's, it's easy for us to love those who love us back, right? Uh, our command to love one another is really easy for those who, who are lovable and who love us back. But it takes a certain divine strength to love those who either don't love us or who have possibly hurt us in some way. And so in this film, a man called Otto, we see this man who's been deeply hurt by life. And we'll explore some of the ways uh, that that has happened in, in a further clip. But... At the onset of the movie, we can see just from those actions that he's in pain and he's become hardened and, and bitter towards others. But we see here in Luke chapter 6 that we are called to love beyond measure, to love in a different way. Jesus challenges us to love our enemies and to do good to those who hate us. And this is radical. This is countercultural. It's a call to step beyond our natural human instincts, uh, those, those instincts that lead us towards, to be inclined towards retaliation and bitterness and anger, and it calls us to embrace a love that reflects God's mercy. 
And so that's what these words are reflecting, this character of God that's, that's um, inclined towards mercy. Jesus' instructions to bless those who curse us can sometimes seem almost impossible, especially when we actually start to take this, this concept out of theory and put it into application, and when actual faces and names uh, appear, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. It can almost seem insurmountable and impossible, and yet it's this call to powerful faith, to ultimate acts of obedience. Because in blessing those who mistreat us, it not only disarms our own internal inclination towards hostility, but it opens the doors for God's grace to work, not only in their lives, but in our own and in our relationships. And so we see in this, in this movie that the neighbors, uh, almost unilateral, have this refusal to respond to Otto's bitterness with anger. And it becomes this living testimony of Jesus' teaching in, in their response to him. They, they choose, many of them, they choose to see past this gruff exterior and they offer blessings through acts of kindness, through waves and friendly greetings and food and all sorts of acts of kindness. And eventually, eventually, Otto's worn down and he's led into a path of healing and forgiveness. And so to further explore the parallels between that and Scripture, I want to continue on in Luke chapter 6, but I'm switching translations on us here. Um, I liked the paraphrase of the message version by Eugene Peterson. So we've skipped a few verses, and now we're at Luke chapter 6, verse 37 through 42, and we'll take this bit by bit. Verse 37 and 38, Jesus goes on, and again, this is paraphrased. Don't pick on people. Don't jump on their failures. Don't criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. Because that hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier. Give away your life. You'll find life given back. But not merely given back. Given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. And I think this passage of Scripture, these follow-up words of Jesus to the golden rule, uh, really uh, illustrate beautifully one of the particular friendships and relationships that occurs in a man called Otto. And so I'm going to introduce this next clip by just saying this is kind of a flashback, uh, a retrospective of a lifelong almost friendship between Otto and one of his neighbors named Reuben. And in this clip, Otto is describing to Marisol the evolution of their relationship, and it depicts how we can let little, little petty differences erode uh, at our relationship and, and, and wedge in between us uh, when generosity of spirit is not present. And so let's take a look at this next clip, and then we will continue on with Jesus' words. So Jesus went on to say, he actually quoted a proverb, can a blind man guide a blind man? Wouldn't they both end up in the ditch? An apprentice doesn't lecture the master. The point is, be careful who you follow as your teacher. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own. 
Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face for you, when your own face is distorted by contempt? It's this I know better than you mentality again, playing a holier than thou part instead of just living your own part. Wipe that ugly sneer off your own face, and you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. To your neighbor. Whoops, sorry. So this, I, you know, it's, again, it's hard to summarize everything. I hope you had a chance to see this. If not, I hope you're inspired to go and watch it because one of the later plot lines uh, towards the end of the film involves Reuben and his wife Anita as they're aging. Uh, Reuben has become disabled and Anita is sick and they very much want to remain and age in place. They'd like to remain in their neighborhood, in their home, but uh, there's a threat uh, between a a kind of a conspiracy between their son and this aggressive retirement home conglomerate uh, that are they're trying to displace them and to sell their home that they've known all their lives and so Otto actually kind of takes on the role of a leader and a hero and he goes into action and he rallies the neighbors and together they thwart this plan and they create a a care plan for both Anita and, and Reuben for these two old friends um, that they have so much history together. And, and I think uh, this plot line, especially this part of the movie, really is, is an enactment of living these words of Jesus where Jesus said, give away your life and you will be given life back. Not merely given back, but giving back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. And Jesus says, generosity begets generosity. And I love that part of Jesus' teaching because it emphasizes that doing good without expecting anything in return is this reflection of God's unconditional love. We see that reflection not only in the words of Jesus, but in this movie where Otto learns to forgive and embrace those that he once viewed as enemies, or maybe even frenemies. But his acts of kindness and mercy once were begrudgingly given begrudgingly but towards the end of this transformation they become genuine expressions of his renewed heart of his transformed heart and this story plot line uh, mirrors the mercy that God shows us this mercy that we're called to extend to others there's a power in forgiveness and that's why forgiveness is at the very heart of so many of Jesus's messages especially the one that we're focusing on today from Luke 6 forgiveness frees us from the chains of bitterness and opens us up to God's peace forgiving our enemies is not about condoning actions or rewriting history but it's about liberating our souls from the burden of the hatred And so through this movie, we see Otto's journey towards forgiveness is this central theme because his interactions with his neighbors and the unfolding of his own past pains, which we'll explore in just a moment, he learns to let go of grudges. He learns to be freed from those chains that have been binding him and burdening him down. And this process brings about a profound internal transformation in this character that can reflect the healing power of forgiveness. So now let's see this final clip as Otto sits with Marisol and reveals um, some of his story because every curmudgeon has a backstory, right? Nobody's born uh, bitter and angry. So let's see this, this part of this story revealed. All right. What am I doing wrong, guys? Hold on just a second. We had never had a vacation.
there's lots of ways that this passage of scripture and this story reflect God's mercy. Jesus concludes this passage by calling us to be merciful just as our Father is merciful. And this mercy is the essence of God's character and should be reflected in our lives and all those who follow Jesus. When we show mercy, we mirror the heart of God to a hurting world because we're all hurting. And this ultimate change in Otto's character showcases the impact that mercy can have on our lives. The neighbor's relentless mercy towards Otto, despite his initial resistance, exemplifies how our actions can reflect God's love and bring about divine transformation in others and in the world around us. And so wherever you find yourself in this story, because a good story invites us in and and connects us with the different characters, right? So wherever you find yourself in this character, in this particular time in your life, whether it be the character of Otto, the character of Marisol, or maybe someone else in the film, there are some applications for our own lives. There are some practical steps to love and forget. And so here's the application for us as Christ followers. First, we are called to pray for those who hurt us. Prayer softens our hearts. It aligns us with God's heart and prepares us to be transformed. Also, we can actively do good. We can actively look for opportunities to serve and bless those who've wronged us, even as they, if they're as close as our neighbor. We can seek a deeper understanding, try to see the situation from another per- person's perspective. It's called empathy, and empathy can pave over a lot of a lot of negativity and pave the way for forgiveness. And while we're on the subject of forgiveness, we can remember and recall those times that we have been forgiven by others and by God and reflect on how much forgiveness we have needed in our life and ref- and let that inspire us to dole out generous forgiveness for others. The teachings of Jesus here in this passage in Luke 6, they're challenging, but they are immensely rewarding if we can attain them. And it's okay if it takes a lifelong of pursuing to attain them. They call us to live out of love that is divine, even as human beings. And so no wonder it's hard, right? It's hard to bless those who curse us and to extend mercy. But we have received endless mercy from our God, and so thus we are able We find God on film because I think a man called Otto is a modern-day parable. It's a modern parable that illustrates how love and kindness and forgiveness can transform even the hardest of hearts. And so today, may we be inspired by this story and leave it from this place, striving to live out these principles in our daily lives. May through these practical steps, we be agents of God's love and mercy and go out into the world forgiving our enemies and participating in the healing and the reconciliation that God desires for all of humanity. Pray with me. God, we thank you for the example of Jesus and the profound teachings in the Gospel of Luke. Help us to love our enemies and bless those who curse us. Show mercy as you have shown mercy to us, so that we may be instruments of our peace and love in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. One of the places that we find love and mercy in this church and in this world is at this table where we encounter God's boundless love. This table is set by Jesus. A feast invites you and me, whether this is your church or has been a church forever or your Presbyterian. This is not this church's table or a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table. And there's always room for one more. We give thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, he took bread and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body that's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he poured out the new covenant. He said, This is sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you drink of this, remember me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts, Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving grace of the risen Lord because great is the mystery of our faith. And so I invite you, those in person and those online, to participate in this sacrament and let me be the one to say, 
that we remember God's boundless love revealed in Jesus Christ when we take this bread and share this cup. These are the gifts of God for God's children, you and me. Come and see and taste how good our God is. If my servers would come and join me, we'll make two lines, and we have gluten-free options available as well. going to end our worship there on those beautiful notes by Sue because I noticed in the clock I have run way over so forgive me but let's pray gracious God may we who have received the sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit that we may show forth your gifts to all the world we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ and as we leave this time of worship may we do so as forgiven people equipped to forgive and reflect the love of God into the world around us help us see and experience and opt into relationship in this world that you love so much. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Go in peace.